Really? Mm -hmm. It is pretty it cool. Is, it is. Yeah. It I is it. pretty cool. Like a laser late shower something. We got mm. we got Dr. Osborne. I want to push you guys a little closer. Can Helen maybe can we pull you just yeah. So that we can get you guys in the frame. I'm here when I'm so you excited. need me. This is my first ever Torah study. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. so Beginning <laughs> with the very first chapter. <laughs> I mean, doesn't get, doesn't get any better than that, right? This is a good way to begin. So, Monica, you were saying, as we were just going on to air, and as I get my glass of water, this is your favorite section of the Bible. It right? is. So why is this it your is. favorite section? I think that in many ways, everything that comes, everything that follows after Genesis 1 is just a reiteration of it. Right, right. It's a, like a performance of it in, in different ways. Um, What's your favorite section of the Bible, if any, Helen? Mm -hmm. Revelation. Yeah. <laughs> the Gospels really touch me. <laughs> Love the Pauline epistles. Yeah, the letter to the Romans. <laughs> Changed my that's life. Second that. Thessalonians. <laughs> Corinthians. Corinthians too. is always good on a <laughs> Thursday afternoon. Do you have a favorite section, Helen? Uh, absolutely not. Not yet. But okay. I'm sure that by the end of these Torah studies, I will. Oh, you will. Yeah. So, how do you look at this text, Helen? Do you look at this as God's immutable word? Do you look at this as the creation of a lot of uh, men 3,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, edited together over centuries? Do you look at these as men inspired by the divine? Do you look at this as like any more profound than Shakespeare, less profound than Shakespeare and Homer? Or how do you look at this text? Uh, at this point in my life, I look at it as options two and three. Okay. <laughs> sort of a mix of options two and three. And uh, as for I don't know that I would compare any of it to Shakespeare because they just feel really different and separate to me. What about as far as profundity? Where would you place this among the, the books that you've read? Well, you have to remember, we are starting with Genesis today, right, right. and I haven't read it all the way through. <laughs> right, right, right. So I think maybe we should revisit that question in, right, right. in like... A year. <laughs> <laughs> well, and honestly, I think you could, because I've taught Bible as literature, right? right? And I found that you can stay on not just Genesis, but Genesis 1 and 2 for like two months. Like, there's enough in Genesis 1 and 2 right. to stick with it. Probably an entire semester, actually. Right. I mean, it's just, it's it's packed. It's packed with stuff, and it's packed with contradictions. Um... I think that's what I love about it. The fact that there are so many contradictions. It contradicts itself at every turn. Um, where where did you teach the Bible's literature? You taught it in New York for the 92nd Street Library. Oh, right? no, no. I taught... Um, or was it you taught Midrash? Yeah, I taught Midrash. Okay. Like a feminist Midrash. Your favorite. I love them. Uh, yeah, I know you do. I know, I know. Um, almost as much as Emmanuel Levinas. Uh, yeah, almost. 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 Inscrutable, right? In, but, but deep, oh, deep, deep and wise. Um, no, I taught, I taught Bible as literature at a university in the Midwest. And how much time did you spend on uh, those few chapters of Genesis? Genesis 1 and 2, probably at least a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. How are you able to get so much out of it? Because I know one problem I have is that I I've read this like 150 times. So how well, are you able what to we would do, we would we would close read it, and I think just, and it, I think translation matters. And every week, I'm talking about how great my translation is compared to everyone else's. Right, right, right. Because it, it allegedly it preserves, um, you know, all of the poetry and the rhythm and the lyricism of the Hebrew. It's supposed to be the closest to the Hebrew that we have. Um, and so, just with the first verse, like here, my translation instead of it doesn't say in the beginning God created, right? Mm -hmm, As if mm -hmm. it's something that happened one time. Mm -hmm. It says at the beginning of God's creating of the heavens and the earth, right. and it leaves it open, right? It implies right. that creation is ongoing, um, and that it, it's 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 continual, and that it's something that I don't know. I guess continues throughout the duration, not just of 
Genesis, but the Hebrew Bible in general. So I think that's a big difference, and so I think I can spend what, I mean, a good hour talking about just the difference right in verse 1. What's the first line of yours? What's the first line of yours while I look up mine? When God began to create heaven and earth. Okay, so again, Oh, that's very similar. Isn't that what, interesting? What, is, what translation is this? Um, this okay. is... Okay, hold on. It says in here. This is... This is what I was given at my blood mitzvah. Because, like, I know the JPS. Like, I have the JPS talk, and that doesn't... It's different than that. This is... Oh, but that is the... Would have been a different year. Oh, okay, See, that's, that's the 1985. The okay. So, they translated them all the ones. When God began, yeah, because yeah, that that's implies cool. the same kind that of that it could ongoing. Be, yeah. yeah, ongoing. Oh, that's interesting. I did not know that. And yeah. mine is the Art Scroll, which is Haredi Judaism, which is right wing Orthodox Judaism. Uh, in the beginning of God's creating the heavens and the earth. Yeah. So in all three yeah. translations we're using, it's the process of creation right. just beginning here, and so which it's is kind a, of ongoing. Which is a very a very Jewish way to to translate it because most translations and all Christian translations right, right. see it as one one definitive moment when God created right. the world. Right, it just stops there. Like this idea of ongoing creation isn't something that's. Um, Why does ongoing creation excite you? I feel like you're baiting me. You're baiting me to get me to talk about Monica. We've known each other for know, five years. When have I ever baited have you? you? Never. We met at Friday Night Live. Oh, yes. Um, At Sinai, yeah. Yeah, Temple Sinai. My sister goes religiously on a Friday night. (laughs) Yes. And I was sitting. We were. It was like some singles thing, and I was holding a a book. It was like a Jewish speed dating. Yeah. 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 And I was holding a book because I always hold a book. That's the only reason I had a conversation with you. That's the only reason she spoke to me. You always keep a book in your hand wherever you go. Yeah. In case I get bored or that's smart. I try to do the same. Whatever, and so Monica liked books. It turned out, it's like she was. Like, yeah, I was like, I'll talk to him. He's yeah, holding a book. Yeah, yeah. So we started talking about books, yeah. and five years later, we're yeah. still talking we about cultivated books. Cultivated some strange kind of friendship. Right. <laughs> That's cool. Yes. <laughs> so seriously, why does why does the notion of ongoing, or oh, say for me, ongoing creation is exciting because it means that what's happening today is still an act of creation and that it like it it impregnates today with more excitement and meaning. It is impregnate the right verb. It is. It? If, if that's what you mean it to be. It's yeah. like it fills, it, it infuses yeah, it today. <laughs> it infuses right. today with more meaning yeah. and excitement. And I think it's also nice to think about it in the context of, you know, this divine act of creation. It, it didn't end, the door didn't close on divinity right. and on the, the creation of right. divinity, it's right. you know still potentially happening all around you. This is an act that is ongoing and alive, and that you're a part right. of. Right. Well, that's what keeps that idea is what keeps Torah alive, right? Instead right. of allowing it to become a cultural artifact that you can right. basically put under some museum glass. Um, you know, I think the idea of ongoing creation extends to ongoing interpretation and um, right. so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's like it's dynamic, it's alive. It's alive. It's like a tree. It grows. <laughs> but tree that's exciting. Life. I mean, it's... It is. It, that's actually, you know, other than Midrash, and this is all part of Midrash, that's one of the things that I love about Judaism that kind of brought me to Judaism is the idea of it as something that's ongoing, not just something that happened like once. One. Yeah, yeah, that you, you study. Um, you know, this whole idea of um, ongoing creation extends to like ongoing meaning making, right? And making things, interpreting Torah so that it means something today in the contemporary era. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I think is um, fascinating. I mean, not just about Judaism, but about I mean, about the Hebrew Bible in general. So, do you think this was written by men, or do you think this was written by God? See, that's a trick question. It's like, um, it's one of the, it's that, like, there's that one Talmudic story of, um, where they say, is it, is it more important to love God or to love your neighbor? Because at the end of the day, you realize that they're the same thing. Hmm. So I think it's, I think it's kind of the same thing. I mean, men wrote it, 
but I mean, I, I think it's 